What about the religious wars? I think we begin, one, admitting that things done in the name of Christ have been horrific, unjustified. Things like the Inquisition, for example, or the pogroms. Yeah, the fact that they are done in the name of Christ hardly proves that they are caused by Christ. Two, it's true that many have been killed in religious wars, but atheistic governments kill too. In the 20th century, some 100 million perished at the hands of such anti-Christian figures as Hitler and Stalin, Mao and Pol Pot. If you think faith is dangerous, well, unbelief is even more treacherous. Three, the wars, uh, the cause of war are complex, but I think most would see that the desire for power, political, economic power, lies at the core, not religion. In other words, people do things uh, in the name of religion more than they'll just do something in the name of an economic theory. Uh, religion becomes a pretext more than an actual cause. And four, whereas the Old Testament regulated violence, and it, it is a more violent world back then than the New Testament, the New Testament forbids it. Jesus said that in Matthew 5, Paul in Romans 12. Christianity is not political, it's apolitical. Or as Paul put it, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And so those are the four things that I would begin with in responding to the common assertion uh, that you know there are religious wars, and there are, therefore, and it, this is unstated, it's implied that religion is bad, or as one atheist says, religion poisons everything. Uh, that, again, proves simplistic. Seven, the evil in the world means that there's no God, or at least not the God that you're talking about. There's no good God. Well, firstly, there's a deep philosophical problem, which I, I've tried to highlight in the early chapters of Compelling Evidence. Because without an external moral standard, that is, without an absolute God who's in some sense outside our world, there's nothing by which to measure virtue or vice. Who's to say something is evil? If there's no God, then there is ultimately no good or evil. Whatever is, is right. So to say that I can't believe in a God because there's evil in the world, well, if there weren't God, you couldn't logically hold that there was evil in the world. Don't confuse that with, well, things I find unpleasant. Because what's unpleasant to you may be someone else's virtue. Uh, so uh, evil uh, has to be defined, framed in some way. Two, as far as we understand, a world with free will requires the potential for sin, pain, and suffering. And that's integral to humanity. Take away free will. I don't think any of us understands how we would be human. And so you'd say, well, couldn't God make a world where there was free will but, but no potential for sin? Well, no, because that's illogical. God, I don't think God's capable of illogic. Uh, third, Christianity offers neither simplistic answers nor escape from pain. Even though Christ's followers sometimes look for simplistic answers, like in John 9, verses 1 to 3, Christianity doesn't give the, the facile answer, and it certainly doesn't say, follow us and life will go better and you'll have no pain. Really, the opposite. And finally, God himself enters our world, the incarnation, meeting us in our pain of the cross, the crucifixion. Out of this event, Jesus calls us to a cruciform life. Well, there you have it. I've picked, I limited the discussion to just seven common assertions. I've given you only four responses to each. There's no proof of God. The Bible's been changed. Jesus is merely a myth. All roads lead to God. Science contradicts faith. Religious wars show that somehow, you know, religion is bad. And the evil in the world means that there's no God, at least no good God.